Hello guys, my name is Lucas and welcome. Today we're going to be using iTween to easily animate a rotation on an object. As always, big thanks to all my subscribers and especially those who support me on Patreon. Now let's begin with the video. I started by downloading Boxophobic's Skybox so I can have a simple scene set up. You also need to download iTween if you haven't downloaded it yet. Now I have a simple scene with a cube in the middle which we're going to be rotating in this video. Before we start working on the cube, let's make a canvas so we can have buttons to call the functions from our controller. So let's create a new object from the UI list and we're going to select canvas. We're going to make this screen space overlay, that's correct, but we want to scale it with the screen size, but I'm going to be doing it in a full HD resolution. Now in the canvas, we're going to create a button. So again, UI button, and I'm going to call it root rotate to button. And you see it on the middle of the screen if you're in the game in the game tab. Uh, we want to put it on the corner so it doesn't block our view. So here in the rec transform, we can press Alt and Shift, and then we can set it to go to the corner of whatever corner we want. And uh, we can move it a little bit to the left, so minus 25, a little bit downwards, and let's make it a little bit bigger, so something like uh, 380. And now I'm going to edit the text inside the button, rotate to, and let's make the text a little bit bigger, something like 80, it's too big, 50, so that we can see it clearly. Now we have this button and we're going to simply set a reference uh, from our script so that is easier and simpler. Now that we have our scene ready, we are going to select our cube and add a controller. I'm going to call it cube controller and create a new script. Now inside our script, we want to create some references for our buttons. So public, uh, we don't have button because we need to tell Unity that we're using Unity Engine dot UI. So public button, and we're going to call this rotate to button. So we can use this button to rotate our object. So we need to add our function on the on click listener of this button. If you want to learn more about buttons and how to give them functionality from another script, please go check the video on the description. So now we want to add functionality to the button. So inside here, we're going to simply do rotate to button dot on click dot add listener. And we're going to use a Lambda expression to add our functionality to the button. So we do to uh, double parentheses and curly braces and here we can type our code. So here is the actual tutorial of today, iTween, the iTween part is going to be done inside here. So this is what is going to happen when we press the rotate button. So iTween.rotate to the game object that we want to rotate, which in this case is this game object. Then we need a hash table with the arguments or the parameters for iTween so it can know how to animate our object. So iTween.hash and we're going to do it vertically so it's easier to read. So I have the documentation from Pixel Placement here. I'm going to leave a link in the description. I suggest you read it. But basically we can use a vector 3 to define a rotation that the game object needs to rotate to, or we could just separately define each axis of rotation. Uh, there's other things you can play with, like if it's a local rotation or not, if it uses time to animate, or if it uses a speed, is there any delay, etc. So first, let's try using rotation as our first parameter. And here is a vector three, so new vector three. And right now, our cube, the current rotation of our cube is 0, 0, 0. If we see the documentation, it says that it's Euler angles. So the number that we need to pass is 
value from 0 to 360. So let's say that we want to rotate the cube 180 degrees so it looks back on itself. So the first one should be 0 because we don't want to rotate on the x-axis. We want to rotate 180 degrees on the y-axis and we want to rotate 0 on the z-axis. Now remember that's not a semicolon but a comma because we need another parameter which is going to be time. We want the animation to finish in a period of 2 seconds. So just type 2 and remember that's a float so if you want to have something like 2.5 you need to add an F to it. Lastly I'm going to add an is type and we're going to start by using a simple linear easing. So itween.isType.linear. That means that is there is no curves on this. It's the simplest method. And that's it. So there in the last line we don't need the comma because then it comes the closing parenthesis. So now we can try this, but before that we need to make sure that we set the reference to the button that we created. So just drag the button from the hierarchy to the space here in the inspector. And now if we play this, hopefully something will work. So the cube is here. If we press rotate to, you see that it rotated 180 degrees. Something pop up here that was the iTwin script. And when the iTwin animation was finished, uh, the iTwin script was removed by itself. And now you see that the rotation of our cube is 180. So if we press this again, nothing is going to happen because the target rotation is already 180. You see, rotate. The, the iTwin script still gets add to the cube, but nothing happens. If we change this to 90, you will see that the same rotation, not the same rotation, but the same target rotation will be reached after two seconds. Therefore, the rotation of this object is going to be a little bit slower. So you see it rotates a little bit slower because it had to rotate half of what we originally rotated within the same amount of time. If you want to have the same speed in your animation, whether you're rotating 5 degrees or 100 degrees, we use speed instead of time. So now it's going to have a speed of 2. In the documentation, it doesn't specify if speed is degrees per second or some other value. But after you try a few times, you can get a rough idea of the speed values for iTween. So let's play this one more time. And it might be a little bit slow. Yeah, it's very slow. It feels like it's 2 degrees per second. 1, 2, 3, something like that. I don't know if you see here in the inspector. So it's going to be very slow. So let's try something like 20 degrees per second. So rotate 2 and it should take 9 seconds to go from the front to the back. So if we do something like 90, the animation time will be only half of it. So it's 4.5 seconds. So if we rotate it, you see, the speed of the rotation is the same, but the animation time is much shorter. Now, I want to be a little bit faster here, and we're going to play with the is type. So, the is type right now is linear, so it starts with a speed, it keeps the same speed throughout the whole animation, and it finishes instantly with the same speed. If we use something like sign for example is in out sign that means it's going to slowly start like a sine curve and it's going to slowly deaccelerate at the end of the animation with the same sine curve so is in out sign and let's see how that looks let's use the same and the same speed sorry because we should not change two things at the same time so let's use the same speed and compare how it looked compared to how we just did it the previous time, the last time. So now if we rotate from, let's do it again from zero. If we rotate from zero to 180, you will see it starts slow, it accelerates. And then when it is almost over, it starts deaccelerating and it's a little bit smoother. So now I'm going to do 50. So it's easier to realize the easing. So from zero, rotate to, you'll see it starts slow and then it slowly stops. Nice. And same if we rotate from 90, rotate to, start slow, 
and stop slow. So that's already something essential for doing animations. In animations, you always have to use curves. That's what gives the animation a feeling of realist realism, because nothing on reality starts with the maximum speed. Everything needs, needs to slowly accelerate, and that's what curves are for. Now we have other types of curves that are very funny. So, so for example, we have bounce. So ease, let's use a ease out bounce. So that means that it's going to bounce at the end of the animation. So let's take a look, rotate, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> that's funny. And that's a nice and easy way to give an animation or make an animation for our object. So it bounces. Another one that I like is elastic. So we can use is out elastic and it feels like rubber band. And we're going to rotate and you see it feels like is a maybe a rubber band attached to the axis or something like that. Rotate. Uh, and then you can play with all kinds of is types. There is uh, curves like um, exponential curve, square curves, cubic curves. And you can see from this class, just press dot and then you can see all the curves they have. So I'm going to teach you one more thing because I think it's important to know that now we're rotating from a value to another value, but maybe we wanted to rotate by a certain amount every time. So I'm going to create another button called public button, same thing, but instead of being rotate to, I'm going to call it rotate by. So this is going to rotate by a certain amount, no matter where you are. So let's copy all this because we need to assign functionality to the rotate by button. And instead of using rotation, these times we're only going to use Y. So instead of giving it a whole vector, we're just going to give the value of Y. I want it to rotate by 90 degrees. Remember to change this to rotate by. But 90 degrees in rotate by is a little bit tricky. If we see the documentation clearly, rotate from, rotate by. The amount here did, didn't say that is a value of a Euler angle. If you see the amount here is multiplied by 360. So now a whole turn is actually a value of one. The values here in rotate by, if we use Y or X or Z, we need to use a value from zero to one or negative if you want to change the rotation direction. So if we want 90 degrees, that's a quarter of a turn, we need to use 0.25F. And that is going to be multiplied times 360, thus giving us 90 degrees. So same thing, let's create another button for this. So we're just going to duplicate this button and we're going to rename it to rotate by button. We're going to rotate by, change this to, and make it lower. So this minus 80, maybe more, minus 25. And there we go, rotate by. Now we need to add the reference to the rotate by button. And there we go. Now we can try the function, rotate by. And then you see it rotated 90 degrees. Now we can rotate it again, 90 degrees. 90 degrees every time is going to rotate by 90 degrees. If we rotate to, however, it's going to rotate back to the rotation, the vector three rotation that we defined on our script. So rotate to, and it's going to go back to that position. So rotate by, and then rotate to. Rotate by, rotate by. Can we press rotate by many times? I, I'm trying, but you can add two iTwins of the same type to an object. So if we keep pressing, it's going to not happen. So you you need to wait for your animation to come to finish before you can keep rotating it. So that's pretty much it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. We did it. We made two rotation functions for our cube. I'm going to use this project and keep adding more on iTwin. So we're going to learn how to punch things. We're going to learn how to animate things with different kind of iTwins at the same time. We're going to learn how to twin values so that we can change 
colors, with curves, etc. So please uh, remember to subscribe to this channel and press the notification bell so that you can get notified when I upload those videos. Again, guys, thank you so much. Please like this video and share with your friends, and I will see you all on the next one. Goodbye. Peace. Psh.